lovely people and welcome to another fragrance related video. This time we have four new fragrances that we are going to unbox and I'll give you my first impressions on them by testing them out. And we have a bit of a different concept today because I know that I tend to ramble so we are doing a bit of a smaller first impression and I will leave talking about this extensively to another video because I think that these fragrances deserve that and they deserve to be talked about after I've used them a little bit more and this will also make a little bit of a shorter video for you guys so you can enjoy the discovery of new with me easier. So today, oh my god, we have a great great <laughs> selection of things. First uh, we have, as you know, I like uh, uh, vintage fragrances and I love classics and we have Gloria Vanderbilt, uh, Vanderbilt. and this is a very very old-fashioned uh, fragrance. I have fragrantic open. So I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of uh, background. So <clears throat> this was launched in 1982 which means that it's an 80s fragrance and it is aldehydic <laughs> powdery tuberose vanilla yellow flower uh, warm spicy woody floral and sweet. So I have heard a lot of great things about this, so this is the first one we'll be opening. And next we have, I'll just show you all of them, we have Bourgeois Cobaco. And I have not heard many people talk about Bourgeois Cobaco, but it seemed really interesting when I looked at the notes. This is also a vintage fragrance, and this one is known as White floral, animalic, musky, powdery, aldehydic, fresh floral, citrus, and it's known for the cinnamon in it, so interesting. And this was made in the 30s, 1936 to be exact. So this is uh, from the same <laughs> uh, time as, for example, bluegrass, which makes this one of the oldest formulations uh, of my fragrance collection. So bourgeois cobaco. And then next uh, we're kind of kicking it off with these vintage year fragrances. We have a powerhouse <laughs> from 80s again and this time I'm introducing some leather. Ooh, Paloma Picasso <laughs> by Paloma Picasso. And this one is an animalic amber leather uh, earthy and mossy scent. So it's a chipre. So this is a very popular Chipre fragrance and I've wanted it for a long time, finally got it. And last but not least, we are talking about my first ever Mancera. Ah! <laughs> Amber and Roses Mancera. And this one is, as the name suggests, a musky floral, powdery, animalic, rose and amber scent. So. Those are the four ones that we are gonna talk about and as an honorable mention I got myself a spare bottle of Chiara, one of my favorite fragrances, but this one I've talked about extensively on my channel and you can find uh, videos about it if you go search it in my profile. So let's start. <laughs> uh, Vanderbilt by Gloria Vanderbilt and this one I've heard many people call it their favorite work fragrance. And let's open it up. I took the serine rep out of all of these just to save a little bit of time because nobody wants to listen to me uh, rave about that. And I have always loved the bottle. It is so gorgeous. It has this beautiful swan embossed in it. And I just think this is super classy and beautiful. I also am a fan of yellow flowers. So this will probably go well for me, I think. And it has this nice uh, cap that says Gloria Vanderbil uh, Vanderbilt. Why is it so hard to say? And just your standard atomizer. 
uh, it looks pretty good. This is a 100 milliliter bottle. I think this is stunning. I like uh, simplistic but beautiful bottles and this is exactly that. Oh wow, smells so nice. <laughs> I'm going to do a little box test because uh, I want to give you guys just the first impression. So there we go, one spray. Wow, lovely. <laughs> this. Hmm. Okay. I get the carnation and I get uh, the aldehydes right off the bat, but they're the soapy type aldehyde. Not very strong and not very metallic. Just like fresh, clean, nice aldehyde. Very airy. And this is stunning it's gorgeous it it smells very good it's white floral white florally i get the rose i get jasmine lavender i really like the lavender in this and it comes through to me mm, it has cinnamon opoponax civet musk and vetiver and i love opoponax and i can make that out mm, mainly because it's one of my favorite notes but it's, um, in this one it's very, very well blended with the other notes and this is like, it smells like luxurious uh, soap to me and I actually really like this. Oh, this is one of the best aldehydic uh, smells I've ever smelled. Like in this it's very balanced and this is beautiful aldehydes. Like this is how I like my aldehydes to be and I feel like um, we should bring them back in something like this because it really works with this like soapy, nice, pineapple <laughs> and green mm, scent. So this one has a lot of the different notes, but the feel that I get is like uh, the yellow flora floral uh, sunshiny elements with that soapiness, a little bit of that opoponax, which makes it um, soft and a bit oilier, a bit more skin-like. Uh, the animalic in this is so well tamed, it's very pretty. Uh, that was my cat, <laughs> do not mind. Uh, Bahti decided to visit, hello Bahti, and go away please. <laughs> she tried to do it again. <laughs> She's a silly girl. Stop being silly. She's such a silly bones. Not now, baby. We will play later. <laughs> okay, so this is very, as I said, like well-balanced workwear fragrance and I really like it so far. Yeah, I'm not gonna also give this uh, any I'm not going to give these any kind of like numbers on how much I think I like them because I want to give them more wares and after that talk about them. So yeah, what I think is uh, if you want to get into vintage and you like clean scents, this is a good one for a starter vintage lover. It does have that vintageiness, but it's also very easy going. So I think many people would love this and it's no wonder it's a classic. I like it. <laughs> Okay, next up we've got Kobako from Bourgeois and I have not uh, heard about people raving about this a lot, but we've got another stunning bottle, very pretty, very very pretty. So there's this kind of glass element, I like these kind of different glass elements a lot and kind of the glass to have this kind of embossed thing mm, and it says Kobako. This is a 50 milliliter bottle and it has similar atomizer to Vanderbilt, but it's black as you can see. So uh, this one I've heard is white florals and the cinnamon is really st strong in this one. It's more wintry or like autumnal, whereas Vanderbilt can be worn during summertime. So let's test this out. I've heard many people, this is many people's favorite in vintage community. Okay, whoa. <laughs> okay, this has way sharper aldehyde. Oh, this is 
a tough aldehyde, okay, a lot of aldehyde. I can understand that some people don't like this, that it's too old-fashioned aldehyde for them. Wow, there's some note that I really like in this. What is it? It's like some sort of white floral, I know. Wait a minute. Maybe it's magnolia and gardenia. Yeah, I think it's gardenia. It's very heavy on the gardenia and magnolia. And uh, it is, yeah, especially in the beginning, like I got that uh, cinnamoniness and there's ambergris and musk in this and civet, so it's very animalic also. The musk in this is definitely animalic, so if you don't like animalics, you're not gonna like Kobako. But it's also very... It's a little cutting, a little dirty smelling, but it has kind of like those white fresh florals on top. And those smell really nice. This is definitely more... Uh, it has citruses, but it's definitely a white floral. Like, to me, this is mainly animalic white floral. And it is giving me more autumn winter vibe vibes and now it might smell a little funky uh, on the warmer weather. So I think that this would definitely be an, a great autumn or winter scent. Uh, I do think that the magnolia and gardenia are coming off very beautifully. I also like, like the civet note, but then again I like civet, so if you don't... <laughs> It's kind of difficult probably for you. The sharp aldehyde has already calmed down a little bit, but it's strong. This one is a very strong one and it's quite sweet actually. Uh, but I really like the cinnamon, I really like the civet, I like the magnolia and gardenia. This is definitely more floral than, in, than it is ambery <laughs> or uh, animalic. It's mainly floral, then animalic, then amber. So, yeah, I like it. I like it. Not my favorite, but it has so much potential. It's also very pretty. I think it's very pretty, preppy, girly. Um, and I like the civet. I'm not the biggest fan of ambergris, and this one has ambergris, so maybe that is why it's not <laughs> wowing me. Yeah, ambergris is just a weird note. Anyway pretty much like this. Yeah, and I really love the bottle. The bottle is gorgeous. Definitely a stunner. This is only 10 euros. Not bad for that. It smells long lasting. Don't know yet, but both of these smell pretty long lasting. This smelled more long lasting than Vanderbilt. So yeah, very floral heavy, very animalic. I like it a lot. That's nice. Okay, then let's get into Paloma Picasso. And I am excited. Paloma Picasso sounds gorgeous to me. Wait a minute, I'll just get the note composition. <coughs> I'm sorry. Wanna see the notes? Okay, so here we have Paloma Picasso. And Paloma Picasso starts off with carnation, it seems. Here's the bottle. I think that the bottle is very cool. It reminds me of James Bond. It reminds me of bad guys. It's kind of classy, futuristic uh, type. And yeah, this is a fun bottle. Very fun. I think it looks like a sculpture and easy to grab onto. Definitely a stunner. So cool. <coughs> Excuse me. So this one is a animalic leathery smell. It's a chipre and people say it's a little dry. So if you're not into that, then maybe you wouldn't like this. It has oak moss. So if you're not a fan of oak moss and patchouli, you might not like this. Uh, there's also both civet and castorium, both in today's fragrance produced chemically, so not resourced from the animal, which is great. But 
Castorium has this very dark leather, smoky leather thing, and civet can make things a little funky. So, powerful fragrance probably. We're going to do the box test, so let's see. Let me know if you like this uh, quicker type fragrance reviews or like boxings. Whoa, I do get the Castorium. Ooh. Wow, that's super animalic, like super duper animalic, okay? It's sweet animalic. I get the coriander and carnation. There's some greenness, I think that's Angelica. But like the main thing I get is like the animalics. Super dark animalic. And the vetiver is like making the castorium even darker. Because vetiver is the darkest woods, I think. To me it's the darkest thing. It's what makes fragrances smell black. You know, like the element of night, you know, nighttime blackness, inkiness. That castorium and vetiver is really, really strong, leaning almost masculine. This smells like... Uh, this is one of those like cheaper types which are not very inviting. On the contrary, I feel like this is a boss lady scent, okay? You're a boss lady, you want to smell like powerful, with a lot of money. <laughs> This might be it, but it's also very, very animalic. This is probably the most animalic uh, scent I have, and some people might think that the castorium almost smells fecal like. So, just letting you guys know that there's kind of this deep, dark dirtiness, almost muddiness, almost this kind of like, yeah. But then there's like that carnation, coriander, and white florals, hyacinth, mimosa. A lot of like florals kind of balancing it out. Mm, this is very na na nature smelling, okay? This is nature oriented. This, this is definitely a chipre. It's, it has some sweetness, but it's mainly dry. It's mainly dry. You can feel it a little bit on the top of your like larynx, that's how I always know it's a chipre. But yeah, the main notes that I get is the civet and castorium, and to be <laughs> real, I'm not sure I like this so much. This is something that definitely needs to be gotten used to, and the oak moss is very heavy on this one. It can smell a little funky, <laughs> so... Paloma Picasso, definitely a unisex scent. I wouldn't call this a female scent. Uh, I know it's marketed towards females, but it's unisex. It's completely unisex. I could definitely see a man wearing this. Mm, if you like nature and all the smells in nature, you would probably like this a lot. It's a very uh, heavy chipre with a lot of castorium. Like I feel like the castorium is like the biggest star of the show here and the carnation. So if you like those notes, then maybe this is a good one for you. Personally, I feel like I need to get used to it. It is almost too dark animalic to me. It has two animalic notes in it, and those two are powerhouses. Like they're blended uh, here, or like there's a lot of them. It's, it's like they're the main star of the show. So just keep that in mind if you are going to go for Paloma Picasso. Definitely vintage. It is. It is the type of smell that you wouldn't be let into a bar if you were Paloma Picasso, probably. Yeah, it has that type. So then, <laughs> let's get into Monsera Amber Roses. Oh my god. I got the smaller bottle. This is a 60ml bottle because Mancera fragrances are a little bit more expensive. I paid 69 euros for this. Uh, but I've wanted it for a long time. I've wanted to try the Montale Mancera 
line, Pierre Montal, I've heard a lot of good things, I've heard these are great fragrances and the reason I got this was because I wanted to get more rose fragrances and I heard people talk about this that it gives them gothic uh, vibes and it reminds them of cemeteries, reminds them of uh, Dracula, <laughs> Bram Stoker's Dracula to be exact, which is one of my favorite movies, so I was sold at that point. It has rose, amber, muskiness, uh, powderiness, citrus and white floral, plus a little bit of animalix. And it comes in the typical Mancera pouch, which seem, seems like it's good quality actually. And here we have the 60 milliliter bottle. So I've heard about Mancera fragrances that they are super long lasting. They have this cap that you twist, twist on, twist off cap. So definitely something that you can take with you. Mmm, smells nice. But I've heard that these lasts for last for like 12 hours. Powerhouse. Wow, nice. Wow, nice, 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 nice. Very nice quality. Mm. Yeah, I instantly got like the most prettiest rose, like uh, rose petal rose. <sighs> it does smell like dirt. Yeah, it, it does smell like graveyard dirt. That's crazy. It's so earthy. It's, it's exactly that. It's dirt, okay? <laughs> dirt and rose. How interesting. How have they gotten it so close like that? Okay, I can definitely see why some people might not like it. It is quite exactly uh, the dirt that you put flowers in, like, you know, soil and roses. And the more you smell it from close, you get the soil element. And if you kind of uh, just whiffed it in and out, then it's more like an earthy rose, like a earthy, sweet, fresh rose and I really do like this. It's also not headache inducing, it's very clean smelling, it's very good quality smelling. Is it synthetic? Maybe a little, but not in a bad way. I feel like it, it smells just like rose and some might say that they hate this because it does kind of remind you of a cellar if you've ever been to a potato cellar like it kind of had, has that kind of smell to it but this is super earthy yes the Bram Stoker Dracula a reference is perfect it's exactly what it smells like to me also it smells like something a zombie could wear also yeah, this is definitely an acquired taste. Personally, I love it. It's, it reminds me of death. <laughs> like, yeah, cemeteries. This is a cemetery fragrance. If you are a gothic person, you love that kind of darker things, or you love fairy tales or grim uh, stories, like Grimm's stories, fairy tales, you might definitely like this. This has something magical about it. It's also very different. I've never smelled anything like this. It's niche very much. Um, it smells like it's gonna last a long time. It's intimately projecting. It has a little bit of something that reminds me of a bit honey. Like it's, it's that kind of almost honey rose. And I really do like this, okay. I'm very happy I got it, but also I think that it's a very acquired taste. Not a safe blind buy, probably, but definitely gonna use this a lot. Uh, this has autumnal feel to it. Uh, it smells like 
rose garden that's dark and damp. So that reminds me of autumn a lot, but I can also see that if you don't like like that kind of wet earth smell, you will definitely not like this. You will probably think that it smells like mold. mold. Like I've heard so many people say that they don't like earthy tones because earthy tone, tones make them <laughs> feel like uh, something smells like it's gone bad. I like this a lot. <laughs> okay, this is so cool. Mm. But definitely not, I wouldn't say this is a like spring scent or <laughs> it's giving uh, dead things. It's autumn, winter, definitely okay. But it's fresh winter fragrance, similar to Crystal Noir in that way that it has this cold feeling to it. So yeah, that was my first impression of all of my new fragrances and I'm so happy to make this video. I will probably get more into these fragrances as time goes on and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I will probably be making more in-depth videos about all of these. So stay, in tune, stay tuned for that and I see you guys in my next video. Bye!